You're also talking about today a new coordinator within Home Affairs. There is already a cyber and infrastructure security centre within Home Affairs with a group manager. Is this a new role and how do the mm -hmm. two roles interact? So it is a new role, Tom. So one of the one of the things that's been really clear about cybersecurity in this country is that when we came to office, we inherited an absolute mess. Uh, the former government had no cyber security minister and we basically had a lot of good people in government and outside of it who were doing good things trying to work really hard on this problem but all rowing in different directions and what's been lacking this whole time is strong political leadership that the prime minister is now uh, showing on this matter but also uh, coordination within government and outside of it so what we know is that we are only going to defeat this threat if the nation the government and everyone in between um, works together and tries to help prioritise and give strategy to the work that's being done on cyber security and the changes the Prime Minister's announced today with regard to how we manage that within the government is going to be a really critical part of making that happen. We reported the Murdoch review has actually been conducted after those big cyber attacks. Have you seen that or acted on that? Um, Tom, I can't uh, speak about um, that particular uh, review there. Um, so it's very common after an incident like this to look at the arrangements within government and the Prime Minister has done that. Um, one of the um, clear takeaways that we've received feedback from industry, business um, and all the people that we work with on cyber security is that those arrangements weren't fit for purpose, that there were many points of entry into government um, and that we needed to make sure that we were better coordinated in how cyber attacks were being managed. Um, the reason that I say that, Tom, is because we know that we can't reduce our cyber risk as a nation to zero. And no one should you know, be fooling any Australian about that. Um, cyber threats will continue to grow. And what we need to make sure is that incident response, both within companies or um, organisations where this is occurring, but also within government, is practised and fluid and seamless so that we can help get back up off the mat very quickly when cyber incidents do occur. And the arrangements that the uh, Prime Minister has put in place are going to make sure that we're able to do that. OK, but there was the, the Murdoch review and the, the Falk review as well. Were they the same thing? Did they overlap? How did they differ? So the Falk review was helping us look at the legal framework. So the, the, uh, the issues that you talked about um, off the top there about the definitions of critical infrastructure and these sorts of legal questions, that was what Rachel Falk looked at for government. So we're considering her review at the moment and we'll be able to uh, speak a bit more about her recommendations in the forthcoming couple of months. OK, and the, and the Murdoch review, that will be public as well? The, this one goes to Cabinet Deliberations, Tom, and so I'm not going to get into it. OK, so, but so does that mean it's, it's public eventually or, or not? It's, it's within Cabinet, it stays there? It relates, to a cabinet, it relates to a Cabinet Deliberation, Tom, and as you know, of course, I'm not allowed to talk about that. All right. Um, just finally, news today, Abdul Ben Brika, a convicted terrorist over several plots in the 2000s, reports that he could be set to be released soon. Is that accurate? Uh, well, the term of his continuing detention order will expire, Tom, um, but uh, I think there is a very significant court case underway with that and um, I'm not going to get into that matter. It's not appropriate for me to comment when there are legal issues that are on foot before a court. Is it fair to say the government is seeking to have him remain behind bars, though? Again, Tom, I'm not going to comment on it. Um, I'm certainly not going to say anything that might jeopardise a legal case that's before the courts at the moment on something so serious and significant as this. I can tell you that mm. the government will 100% be acting with the national security of Australians forefront of their mind on every occasion when these matters come before us. The other report was this terror risk assessment tool known as the VERA has had its accuracy questioned in a, in a private report that has now been released to his lawyers. Is that accurate? Look, Tom, again, sorry to, to continue to just say it, but there is a court case on foot at the moment that relates to um, someone who is a convicted terrorist, and I'm not going to mm. get into the detail of that court case and in any way jeopardise the public's interest here. I just repeat to you again, the public interest and the national interest here is protecting the security of Australians, and that will be the single driving force of how we make decisions on this matter going forward. OK. A, a non-specific um, question then, broadly, if that... If that tool is being questioned, might we need a new one? Would the government seek to develop a new one that perhaps was, was seen to be more accurate? 
Tom, I'm really grateful for these questions, but again, I'm not going to make any comments that are going to end up in a transcript before a court of law about something so incredibly serious as how we protect Australians from terrorist risk. So I will allow the court case to play out before making any public comment on that matter. Minister Claire O'Neill, thanks for your time today. Good to talk, Tom. Thanks so much.